this is a part I was like, uh. She said, the day was obviously centered on me, the final event being a mirror for me to kiss. But it also felt like I was sharing something very special with my friends, giving everyone an opportunity to reflect on their own ideas of love and commitment. What? You kissed a mirror, and then you're like, now you guys think about that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bed. Love. Bed. Bed. Love. Beyond. beyond. Bed, love, beyond. Bed, love, beyond. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Bed Love Beyond, the podcast for the hopeful and the hater in us to discuss sex, love, and whatever's clever with like-minded people like you who are also in limbo with love. Like us. I'm Martini. I am still Jen. And today's episode is episode 88. With this ring, I me wed. Is sologamy empowering or embarrassing? So, uh... Empowering for 200, Alex. <laughs> If you have a topic you want us to explore or have any questions you want to ask, you can write us at bedlovebeyond at gmail.com or text us at 201-862-8BED. That is 201-862-8233. Thank you for listening to us on all podcast services out there, especially Podbean, because Podbean is the one that we personally use for our podcasts. If you're thinking about podcasting, Podbean is definitely the one to use. The hosting site tracks who listens in what state and country how many people are listening, whether it's through their iPad, Android device, or laptop. The sign-up price is pretty cool, too. So for more information, go to podbean.com slash pbblb and check out the details. All right. So, yes, yeah, episode 88. It's logging me. But before we get into that. Sorry. Yes. I really wish they could see my face. <laughs> oh, speaking of Podbeam and our listeners, can yes. I shout out one of our favorite listeners? Yes, go right ahead. Um, I know that April was our number one fan, mm -hmm. but April, you just lost your spot. Oh. Uh, Sam Dix is one of our one number one fans, and she listens to us. I'm not really sure where she listens to us. I don't have to ask her. Mm -hmm. But she's from the UK, and okay. she loves us, and we love her, and... Shout out to Sam for listening and following us and being in the know. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Yeah, she always uh, writes to us right um, via social media. So yeah, she's pretty cool. Keeps Big up, up to date. And uh, <clears throat> do you want it? To, do you want it to talk about the quote unquote uh, store on our website? Okay, I know you don't like the word store, <laughs> but Martinez like I have a little problem with the word store. Anyway, <laughs> Amazon now is one of our affiliates as well, and all the books that you listen to, oh, listen to, you don't listen to books, or well, you do if you have Audible, but all of the books that you have heard about on our podcast, including um, our guest Kathy's book, um, are found on our quote-unquote store on our website www.bedlovebeyond.com if you go to the tab that says store there's a picture of all the books that we've talked about and you click on the book and you can buy the book through amazon and um, you not only get to support the artist but you also get to support us a little bit and you still pay whatever you were going to pay for the book so but it's a cool way to you know help everyone out and you know get in where you fit in <laughs> absolutely yes and as Jennifer uh, shouted up before, yes, we do have a guest, a special guest. The number one. <laughs> Kathy <laughs> Handley. Look at her face. She's like, what? <laughs> Me? The number one what? That can go anywhere. I know. Wow. <laughs> it's positive, okay? Jeez. What's going on, Kathy? How you doing, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you, you couldn't wait to talk about this subject. Yeah, I was just like on the edge of my seat. I couldn't wait. I was like, <laughs> hold on. I have a couple of opinions. <laughs> yeah, but before we get into that. I feel like we haven't seen each other in a really long time. We haven't actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't even know. what. Well, I mean, I can look up the date, but. We know. <laughs> but. Um, Martini is like a human calendar. I am not. Martini, what day did we meet? What day did we meet? Yeah. When was the first time you met me? April 2008. Mm. See? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> I don't make this shit up. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, since we haven't met... Oh, you have to... Yeah, we, there's a lot of things you have to talk about. First, you have to talk about uh, the concert that you were invited to. What concert? <sighs> she... Oh, MG. Holy <laughs> shit. We have a lot to talk about. Yes. We'll eventually get to the podcast. <laughs> so since uh, I haven't been here for a while and I know there's some podcasts in between that 
I wasn't here for. Um, I was just randomly commenting on things on Facebook and um, I commented on a gentleman's picture about domestic violence in Newark because somebody opened up like a center in Newark for like a walk-in domestic violence kind of center that um, I guess like helps women or whatever and I thought that's really awesome. One, I went to Rutgers and I did the, you know, women and children's major and uh, domestic violence obviously is something that we've talked about on the podcast and it's a... Episode 18. Okay. And it's a really, like, obviously prevalent issue in today's society. So I commented on it, and I was like, that's really awesome. So then he kind of private messaged me. And the person who it was was Kevin Powell. He's an activist. And he's also um, the guy from The Real World, season one, who... Our audience probably doesn't remember. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, if anybody watched season one of The Real World, he was, for lack of better words, the black guy um, who got into a fight with the girl from the South and... You know, I don't know what his, like, thing was there. He's also a writer for Vibe, correct, Kathy? Yeah, he was um, one of the really first generation of, um, like, impactful hip-hop journalists. Right. So he has, like, a very prevalent, you know, place in, I guess, our pop culture. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people do know him from the real world. But obviously, if you're into the hip-hop culture and just, you know, research more about him, he's a writer and an activist and... He does a lot of prevalent things in the community. So his wife, uh, Janiah Parker, put out a play. It was like kind of a choreographed play. It was called She. And um, it's going to be off-Broadway in New York City. But okay. it was kind of like an off-Broadway off preview production. And um, he gifted our podcast, Bed Love Beyond, 50 tickets to anyone who was willing to go check it out. Um, and we kind of promoted it a little bit on the website and... Those who wrote back and, you know, got back to us, um, I emailed them the tickets and they were able to go see the show for free. It was an amazing, moving show. Um, It was nothing I've ever seen before. I've never really gone to a choreographed play before, but like I've been told that uh, For Color Girls was supposed to be like that kind of like a musical slash dance production. Okay. Um, And that's what it was. It was a lot of like, Stories told by dancing, and they had like a really great soundtrack that backed it. And it was basically about all the different kinds of domestic violence and violence that happens to women. They touched on the Sandra Bland situation. Um, It was really great. It was like about 90 minutes, and it was like really, really empowering. And I really think that more people should have gone, and I hope that they do really well on Broadway. But I want to definitely shout out Kevin Powell for giving us those tickets. Everyone I know who went to go see it loved it, and it was a great opportunity. It was awesome. So thank cool. you to Kevin Powell. Sweet. I was like, concert. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> um, I believe you also got some dish to give. Oh, God, I have so much to tell you people. So Facebook stalking again. <laughs> Not proud. I tried in true uh, formula for uh, us on Bit Beyond. What did Heather call it? Research? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, everyone's like kind of heard me talk about Brooklyn on the podcast. You love him. I know. My favorite person. Yeah. So, Brooklyn is allegedly, if stalking does me correctly, <laughs> um, possibly with child. And uh, on his way to holy matrimony. Damn. I don't know about the holy part, but matrimony. Damn. Double maybe, whammy. Maybe city court. Double whammy. At first, I kind of was like, oh, man, that sucks. I was like in a process where I was like fighting with my boyfriend about, not fighting, but like having the conversation about like, where are we going? What's going on? This is getting weird. Not weird. Just like, like non-moving. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I get bored easily. It's a really bad habit. I'm like, I need action. Or I want to look for other things. So So bad. That's I know, it's not like I'm not gonna go cheat or anything. No, no, like, no, I'm just no, I'm just talking about the, the being bored part. Because I believe <clears throat> whatever you're whatever you want to get, let's say you eventually get, you're still gonna be bored. You're not gonna be satisfied. So All that's right. a problem. Me personally or just like in general? No, 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 you personally. Oh. Okay. Like, 
So I don't know. So <clears throat> it's called know. emotional ADD. Yeah. It's a Pisces trait. At first, I was kind of like, eh, whatever. Like, I felt like, eh, that sucks. Like, of course. Because I think like I've even said on this podcast once, I was like, if that motherfucker gets married before I do, which I thought would never happen. Like, yeah, you did say that. <laughs> <laughs> I would, like, I would have felt like a certain way about it. Mm-hmm. So just like the facts, I was like, ah, whatever. But like overall, like you have to think about it realistically. And he won, went back to the girl who he broke up with when I started dating him. Okay. And two, he's like still the same person he was in two thousand six and seven and five or whatever that was. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I mean, he's got a better job, yeah, but like. I don't... At his core, he's still the same person. Yeah, at his core, he's still the same person. Mm. He's like one day away from slicing his wrist every day. Mm. And that's just something that I didn't really want to sign up for anyway. As Mm. an adult now knowing what I know. If Mm. I knew then what I knew now, Mm. I wouldn't have had my little accident. (laughs) Thank you, Kathy. (laughs) If anyone saw Beetlejuice, you know where I'm at with that. So, I found it out and I felt like, eh, for a second. And then I got over myself and I was just like... God save that baby. Right. Because. Well, in marriage. Yeah. Who knows, though? You know how, like, they say there's, like, a person for everyone out there? Yeah. Maybe she's his person. Yeah. Or maybe she just doesn't give a fuck. Also true. <laughs> I mean, the, girl who, the guy who she dated looked exactly like him, but mm. fatter. Okay. We've all been there before. Mm. But, um, yeah. So, I don't know. So, I, like, I, that's just where it's at. Mm. so I have his number in my phone still and I was looking at my phone today not like because I was like waiting to call him or anything just have numbers on my phone mm-hmm. you know you like go through your contacts and you're like who's one I don't know <laughs> 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 I think I'm just gonna clean out my phone all together yeah. just like be done with it mm-hmm. so and not mention his name on the podcast anymore okay why it's not important but he is a uh, <clears throat> I don't want to say a factor in your life but he well, not a stepping stone either but History. He's there. He's history. Mm, okay. Like the Michael Jackson album. <laughs> Good album. <clears throat> so, yeah, that happened. Mm-hmm. And um, I went on vacation. Yes, that's right. You Yeah, you <clears throat> went on the I left the, the country. Trip. I went mm-hmm. to Canada. <laughs> I survived. Me and my boyfriend went. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good time. How was the ride? Fine. Okay. We didn't argue or anything. Right. I mean, I yelled at him because he drives too fast. But other okay. than that, like. For some reason, I thought you were going to drive. We're a couple. We share responsibilities. That I, had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I did drive. <laughs> okay. No, I just thought that you were just going to drive the whole After two and a half hours, mm-hmm. when my blood starts non-circulating in my legs, and I feel like <laughs> I'm about to get a clot, mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, guy, take the wheel. <laughs> I'm not your fucking chauffeur. Mm-hmm. And he did. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, he drove. Um, the trip was fine. Uh, we walked around. We had a good time. We ate dinner. Tried to do things that he would like. He tried to do things that I would like. It was a fair and square trip. When we got back to America, the guy at the gate was like, uh, where are you guys coming from? I'm like, Montreal. He's like, where are you guys headed? And he's like, he shouted out his city. I shouted out my city. And he oh, was like, bad. you guys don't live together? Oh, he goes, how do you guys know each other? I was like, why? Like, I picked them up on the street, dude. What do you think? Nah, they go in. Yeah. <laughs> they really go in. First of all, when you go it's, to it's Canada, rude. there's like some dude with like a little hat and he's like, where are y'all going? My boyfriend goes, Canada. Bitch, obviously we're going to Canada. <laughs> we're at the border. Mm. And I was like, he wants to know like where we're going. Yeah. He asked like where we're going. I was like Montreal. They asked like where we're staying. And I gave him like the street. I was like, Rue something, Xavier, whatever. <laughs> and since that's like the name of all the streets, I was like, okay. Have fun. <laughs> Yeah, they go in. But like when you come back to America, there's like these lasers pointing at your car Mm -hmm. and cameras and like heat sensors to make sure you're not like harboring illegal aliens underneath or something. (laughs) Roll down all your windows. I was like, oh my God. And then they're like, he's always like, oh, you guys aren't going to the same place. And I was like, no. He's like, you don't live together. And I was like, no. (laughs) He's like, why not? I was like, ask him. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, but, but but you got oh never mind. But no, you guys said that you were a couple, or he just yeah, no, assumed no, no, that. No, he asked. I'm sorry, he asked how we knew each other. I said we're boyfriend girlfriend. Oh okay okay. And he goes, you guys don't live together. And I said no. He's like, why not? I was like, ask him. 
You guys could have been dating for a month. He doesn't know that. That's rude. He asked anyway. I'm glad he asked. Put mm. him on the spot a little bit. <laughs> and what did he say? And he laughed. And I was like, hopefully after his trip, you know, he won't have cold feet. Mm. So what? <laughs> go, go what on. are you mm-ing about? Just poke, poke, poke. But go ahead. I'm not poking. We've been together. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> what the fuck? You know why? <laughs> you know why? It's not his fucking business. <laughs> now, he, now, children. <laughs> he could ask him. It was oh, comic boy. relief. If you didn't get the joke, mm-hmm. you're 2008. So, anywho, <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, <laughs> the guy laughed. And I was like, "Oh, after this experience, hopefully." <laughs> Shut up, Kevin. After this experience, hopefully he won't have cold feet. Whatever, whatever. Mm. And he doesn't really have cold feet. Like he's been making a lot more moves towards doing everything that he said he was going to do, mm. and whatever. So, I mean, that's a good plus. And she brought back ketchup chips. Yes, and I brought back ketchup chips for everyone, which is not only what Kate and Nadia and people are known for, apparently, besides their delicious syrup. And poutine that you didn't have. Yeah, I didn't have poutine. Sorry, Canada, if you guys are listeners up there. <laughs> I did have roti, though. Can get that in Newark, Jen. Yeah. It was served by white boys with man buns. You would have liked it in beards. You would have been about Before. that. <laughs> Anywho... But then I come back and you have like the only attitude. You, Martini, not Kathy. No, Kath- I, I, Kathy know, I nice. know you're referring Kath- to me. <laughs> Kathy was nice to me because I bought her chips. <laughs> well, that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have the only attitude? I always have an attitude. Why? That's just how I am. He's nice to me when he's sliding in my DMs. Ooh. Oh. I do. <laughs> I do slide into DMs. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> it's 94. There. She knows. Oh, in case you guys don't get the joke, 94 was their percent rated on what? Coffee meets bagel. What? Which one? Okay, keep okay, it. Keep okay, it. keep it. Do we meet on Okay, keep it? Yes. No. Oh. What was our percent rated? Two <laughs> percent. <laughs> uh, 80. It was either 84 or 86. I don't get along well with others. <laughs> But I don't remember the, because you know how they did it by threes. So like friend, uh, no, not friend, uh, enemy. Oh. I, I don't know what it was like enemy or Friend what, or lover. I don't know what the middle one was. Friend sounds good. So The middle, middle one said run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, why did you have the only attitude? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I call Martini. He doesn't answer. He calls me back. He's like, what? What, what do you want? What? Not nice. <laughs> that one. I did not say that. <laughs> what did you say then, Martini? I was like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the tone. Oh, oh. You were like, oh, yeah. What was that? What, what, what do you want? You called? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> like, Holy shit. And then I said something about like, why do you have an attitude? And he was like, you got to be balls deep or balls out or something. Oh, you got to be balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's going to be my new motto. <laughs> Yo, you got to be balls deep. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, and I was stalking your Instagram, so Ooh. you're not going to tell me why you were being a dick to me. Okay. Um, we'll just brush over that. And uh, were you really putting together a sex swing? No, I wasn't. <laughs> well, that would have been interesting. <laughs> I can't find it now. It's it's up there. I didn't delete it. I can't find you. Oh. Anywho. Oh. Then I asked you if you were dating, and you're like, no, I'm living vicariously through you. Yeah. Attitude, attitude, attitude. Well, then attitude. That was factual. I'm like, you're the only, you're the only one out of this duo that's popping. So I was like, all right, let me see, let's see what's going on with you. You need to get on that. Yeah, that's right. You need to be part of the, uh, you know, cuffing season moments. You need to share your. No, I, I think I think uh, not the season is over. Uh, what is it? The tryouts. What <laughs> I think is the thing is done. Oh yeah, because you got to because now you got to bring the because it's almost the holidays, so now you got to bring the people to the play. Well, you don't have to. Was it the playoffs? I don't know. We have yeah, a calendar. Something. That's right. Go so that's really, I think, all that I have, mm-hmm. right? I guess. And you're I not going to so. tell me why you give me an attitude. Oh my god. So. <laughs> <laughs> you think, yeah, did the what, what concert? Uh, play trip. Oh, sorry, play trip. That was it, right? The news. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Cuffing season. 
October 1st to the 31st was tryouts. It is now preseason until the 30th. Cuffing season officially begins December 1st to January 15th. February 14th is a championship. <laughs> See if you make it. <laughs> yep. So, what's going on in your world? And don't say nothing. Okay, fine. And someone pass the chips. <laughs> um, something really happened. Like, uh, weird happened. Like, two days ago, I had a crying session in front of my laptop. It was very weird. Is Kathy laughing over there? <laughs> She's chewing. I'm chewing. Can you can you describe the crying session? It was really weird because I was I I woke up and then I was like, all right, I need to work on the podcast. This podcast actually. So I was working on something and then uh, I was listening to music and the song came on. What song? Uh, you wouldn't know it. Katy um, Perry. No, no, no. Really? <laughs> um, this song came on. Now I want to sing it. I won't do that to you. <laughs> you gonna sing "Firework"? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her we're Katy Perry song. Uh, "Thinking of You." Never heard of it. Okay. Yeah. Is that a deep cut? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Dumbass. So, um. Yeah, I was listening to the song, and or you know, the, you know the part where uh, at, at a wedding where you want to have everybody sit down before the ceremony starts. What ceremony? Uh, like, what, before, before um, at a church? Yeah, whatever. Um, the reception? W- no, 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 not before the reception. Before they come down the aisle? Yes. Okay. I, I don't know if that has a, a name. The wedding march? No, before before that. When no, when you when you're trying to set the people down, uh, the the guests. Like, you know, when you just... The interlude? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it has a name. But anyway. Yeah, that... A song came on, and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool if I put that there for everybody to be like, all right, get your ass in your seat. The ceremony's about to start, right? Oh, was this like the 10,000... What is this song? I would die every day waiting for you. That song? No, no, no. 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 That's a good song. Um, That's a good song. But... And then I started thinking... (laughs) Our guest just ice scrolled me. (laughs) (laughs) Then I said... Then I, then, of course, my imagination started going Mm -hmm. and, and, and I placed myself, I saw, I saw all my, oh, I placed myself at the rehearsal, at the rehearsal before the rehearsal dinner. Who was the bride? I don't know. She was faceless. Mm -hmm. Um, and I saw all my, the groomsmen, the brides, maids and all that stuff. And us getting prepared and blah, 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 while that song was going on. Mm -hmm. And for so while I was looking at it, that while I was imagining it, it was really nice. It was really beautiful. Right. So it was Mm -hmm. super happy. Mm -hmm. But me, I felt super sad in real life. Yes. In real life. Sorry. Yeah. I'm like China. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the in in the imagination, were you just like daydreaming this? No, no, I wasn't daydreaming it. You were night dreaming? No. I was working on the podcast. So that's a daydream. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and I I started bawling. And I was just like, wow. Well, now I feel like a shithead. Is that why you gave me an attitude? No, 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 no. Um, But I was like bawling. And I was just like, man, what was that? It was was a moment. You know, and I was like, man, okay. What is stopping you from progression? Hmm? Why don't you go out there and like swipe left or right or something? Uh, one money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that actually that's that's pretty much the big thing. I have everything else. But oh oh well no no what am I talking about? Uh, <laughs> money. <laughs> that's one. Uh, and also the not necessarily fear of rejection, but the judgment, the judgment of the placement that I am in life, mm-hmm. but not to say that I shouldn't be judged, but just the fact that the judgment will exist. So what are you doing to prevent any of that? Sit on my couch. Let me do some therapy. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I think we did this last uh, episode too. What do you mean? Let me rephrase the question. So you know what the problems are. What yeah. is the solution? Well, to progress in the things that 
I want to do in life, obviously, which 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 is what I am doing. But is it by any means necessary? Or does it have to be like Martini's way or no way? No, I, I'm I'm more far along than you think. Let's well, I don't know because you don't share shit with me. I don't share shit with anybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm a private person. All right, well. Are you doing Uber? Hmm? Are you doing Uber? No, no, no. That's by any means necessary. Correct. I'm about um, to do some Lyft. I, I, I tried to do that. Did you try to do Uber? Either or. No. Yeah. And? <laughs> I wasn't quote unquote allowed to. Are we talking about by your fucking parents? Yeah. Martini. What? I'm, I'm supposed to defy them? No, I, I we actually got we actually we actually got into a big argument about that. Chime in at any time, Kathy. I'm just chewing. <laughs> I'm just chewing. No, no, my, no. My dad would say I would rather drop dead than to see to see you do that because he sees he feels that that's beneath me. Can we talk about? I mean, not to shout out your dad, but. Your dad owns a taxi company, right? Which is why he does not want me to do that. Because he doesn't want to do that. Does he know that all the cool people are doing it now? All the cool people. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, no, no. I understand. Yeah, Uber's not like a lowbrow thing. No, no. But he he just April feels that it. like he, you know, he's been doing it more than I've yeah, been living. But he was doing so. it when it was like, you know... You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. You got to get a car. You got to get a medallion. Right. Now it's like, Psh, I got a car. I want to make 50 bucks tonight. Ding, ding, I'm on. No, Let's go. I feel you. I, I I was all about that. I was like, yo, I could do that. You know, and I, yeah, and I was going to go ham in it too because I He don't want you taking his business. <laughs> That's what it is. Is he kid and play taxi? <laughs> no, I haven't. No, um, no, I'm saying, is he part of kid and play taxi? No, kid, no, no. kid and play taxi is a taxi company in Rockland County, right? It sounds familiar, I but I haven't. But I haven't seen. I haven't seen it. But yeah, um, the, the, the it's on, so. So yeah. So, so what else? No, I, that's it. Pretty, pretty much. Mm. Go ahead. I, I sat on your couch. Go ahead. Give me the diagnosis. I don't know, man. Sell drugs. I, <laughs> I really don't know. Will they like that better? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Donate sperm. No. Why? Because I don't want to do that. Well, yeah. I I, I want to know where my kids are at. Uh. <laughs> Suit yourself. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't do know. You, do you think it's easy to uh, write off progression when you get like one little obstacle, like something like that, where you can just say, ah, there it is. I can't do that because... I don't want to, you know, defy my parents. And then it's just another reason to kind of feel slapped down and then just kind of stay in a place because it's like that's one option out of 50 million. Oh, no, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Costco, you can get $17 an hour pushing carts. True. Or working front end. Or you can get $25 an hour stocking shelves. I'm just saying there are like, and it's holidays. I mean, I know I'm not saying you're not trying. I'm I'm sure you are. You just don't tell anybody anything. Mm-hmm. But like, we've been in this podcast now for like what two years? It's gonna be two years in January. Whew. January sixteenth. So it's like, it is kind of hard to be a creative and then figure out what to do with like a day job. And I understand that. That's mm-hmm. that's a huge obstacle when you have like a large project but it is kind of difficult because you know you have to kind of mentally compartmentalize yourself with what's making your money versus what's kind of feeding your passion and sometimes when those two things don't come together the way you want them to that's where like the i guess the self-destruction kind of trickles in yeah definitely yeah it's it's, it's, (laughs) it's always it's always uh an internal battle Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and and maybe again that's probably why I like flipped off because I'm always I'm always getting agitated at home so because of whatever I thought you were like mad that I went on vacation with my boyfriend um you want to go back like all the episodes before that I couldn't wait for you guys to go on your vacation I, I was surprised that he went to therapy like I want you guys to oh, yeah, succeed with me. Look, look at you that. see you see that 
trying to throw me under the bus, and I have evidence. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I don't know. You just seemed hella angry, and I just got back. I don't know. I had I don't good know. news to share. Yo, I, I want you to see more than you do. You just don't want to hear about it. <laughs> no, you can say whatever you want. It's, this is the show. Okay. So, I don't know. Why don't you just go on like, like Starbucks dates? Lattes are buy one get one free this week. That can only last for so long. Mm. Tinder. I've tried that. They have low expectations. <laughs> don't they? I don't know. I've never done. <laughs> Isn't it like swipe left to have sex? No. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never been on it. Jeez. I don't know. Sorry. Oh my goodness. I just want you to like date and contribute to the podcast and tell us about your dates. I don't get to go on dates anymore. So are you saying that I'm boring? What? <laughs> I'm not saying you're boring. I contribute by finding topics, and you contribute by you do you do by, all uh, the, you do all of the technical do your work shenanigans. <laughs> like, guess what I did today? Exactly, it's no, fun. Pe- it's not people, but people like hearing you. Remember why? They do. Uh, RV likes to listen to you, and also um, mm. that guy, uh, the rock, the rock god of podcasting. He still wants to uh, talk to me, converse with you. I bet he does. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I haven't <laughs> right? eaten yet. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> we better get going then. <laughs> so that's all that's happening in your world? Uh, yeah, man. Right. Just uh, the podcast and uh, other ventures. Other ventures? Yeah. You know, just trying to won't mention on the podcast. Okay. So what's the topic? The topic is <laughs> salagamy. Salagamy. Yes. Did you make up that word or is there a thing? No, that? no, it's a word. Salagamy. It's, it's the single I don't thing know, of like monogamy. People make up like all these words. Like, I mean, there's something. I, I know gaslighting is like a new thing, but then they said there's something worse than gaslighting. What? I put it on the podcast, uh, the website. But gaslighting is like the newest term, but that, but that's an old like thing that it's like has a been done. Military tactic, isn't it? <laughs> no, well, maybe I don't know, but not not the, the way that not the way that we're referring to it. Oh no, I know what gaslighting means. Oh 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 <laughs> oh, that almost mansplained. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, you were so close, no, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean that. Like swatted. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, salagmi means self marriage is a marriage by a person to oneself. It is known as a commitment that values self love and self compassion so when i first started seeing this stuff a friend of mine uh uh sent sent this sent this article to me but i i was seeing uh things about this a while back and at first i was like what is going on uh what is this and i started to look into it and i'm just like really like chicks are marrying themselves now like is that like we're just cutting off men just entirely <laughs> it's because i i didn't know what was going on and it seemed it seemed like they're advocating, I guess, like loneliness or no, not, not depression, uh, being depressed that they could that they really couldn't find anybody, and it's like you know what, or or you know what, no man is good for me, so I'm just gonna marry myself. Fuck it, you know. And it was like, all right, so let me. Some days it really just seems like a really reasonable solution. Yeah, there's. I don't know. I think. I think you're. Um you're coming at the scenario from a kind of a defensive perspective because absolutely you're looking at it like <laughs> what but i think um if I'm, just to play devil's advocate to slogamy so, Sol- salagamy salagamy J- just think of monogamy I, I know what monogamy is but what is salagamy like solo S- yeah solo mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> cool um but i think you know men don't have to worry about a lot of the uh the celebratory aspects of these milestones that women have to. Yeah, you guys show up. So, you know, there's a wedding, yes, but then what follows? Before the wedding, there's the bridal shower. Then there's the wedding. Then there's the celebration of the baby shower with the fir- the child coming. Then there's the first birthday. Then there, there are these milestones that, for the most part, women are the ones who have to celebrate more, whereas men, to your point, Jen, just kind of show up when they when they need to, and I think... You know, you, when you were we were talking about salogamy, um, and you mentioned the Sex in the City episode where Carrie attends um, that uh, the party and um, and her shoes get lost, her mm-hmm. Manolo Blahniks, and yeah. I think they were Manolo Blahniks. Yeah, yes, they, they were. were. Yeah. Um, 
and her friend. I had to um, watch half of it to get the reference. Oh, yeah. yeah and um, Tatum O'Neill, you know, was the friend. And um, and she was just like, come on, they were just shoes. And Carrie's like, how many times have I had to show up? I've had to bring these gifts and et cetera, et cetera. And, and you're kind of just like reducing my belongings. Why? Because right. I, I don't have a child. I'm not married, whatever. And then by the end of the episode... She announces that she's marrying herself, and as part of the bridal gift, it's this pair of shoes that were seemingly stolen from that party. And I think, you know, the whole aspect of from what what I'm gathering from sologamy is I don't I don't necessarily think sologamy is a cure for loneliness because you're still solo, gummy. Um, (laughs) But it is, in many ways, in my opinion, I mean, and and this is completely from an outsider's perspective, just like a fuck you to having to show up for everyone and people not celebrating your milestones because they don't involve a partner. So I think that's probably where the logic comes in. It's it's like almost like throwing a big party for yourself to kind of get the payback for all of these times that you've spent all this money. I mean, as a woman 38 years old who's not married with children... There's so many. I've celebrated so many milestones of people around me. Baby showers, bridal showers, bachelorette parties, weddings, baby birthdays. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of friends who, who always you know kind of pay it forward in their own ways as like a thank you. But then there's just some people who it's just like you know you'll keep getting the invites, but then you know you have a birthday party at a club and they don't show up, or right. you know you have a friend's giving and they're not there, and and it's these are things that. The reciprocity isn't there and then you start to kind of back away from their milestones that is so so true i'm just like thinking like yeah. how many birthday kids birthday parties i've mm-hmm. been to i'm like you think you're friends and you want to be supportive of your friends but there are some friends that you have that are just like extended friends that now that they've gotten married and have children like you don't see them as much don't talk but they still feel the need to like invite you to their kid's third birthday and of course you go and you attend and you bring a gift but like the fact of the matter is is like you're never going to really see any of that back. No. Like, even my mom, who, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get married. We're going to move in. We don't know what's going on yet. But, and I personally don't care if I have a big wedding or not. But I know my mom is like, I want you to have a wedding. And I will pay for it. Because I've been to so many of her own friends' kids' weddings. And had to give gifts and, like, you know go to baby showers and stuff she's like and she's like i want it to be my turn and she's not even she already got married she literally said she wanted to marry my father again so she can have a wedding like a party not a a wedding a party yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm like that's sweet but like (laughs) i guess she just kind of feels like whatever and i totally get like what kathy's saying that like you know not necessarily about being alone but at this age it changes like you do go to all these parties and you give x y and z you know and those people can't show up for you the same way that they used to Mm -hmm. because i have a kid now or i have a husband and i have to see what my husband wants to do and i have to see if i can get a sitter for the kid and you can't be like a douche about it you have it is what it is yeah it's life. It happens. It evolves. It grows. And sometimes you fit in, and sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is like a perfect way to be like, I am celebrating loving me, mm-hmm. right? And this is how we're doing it. It's interesting because you see how um, how offended people get when you don't show up to those milestones right. too. Like that. It's not you know if you can't come, you're 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 even if you have like a boyfriend, you're right. supposed to be the um the single gal with the open schedule. You, right. Like you should, That's true too. you have to show up and, yeah. and you always have to show up. And, and it's funny because if you think about it, I mean, our next milestone birthday is like 40. Right. You see how many of those people don't show up if you're throwing right. a big party. I remember like my 30th. I don't, I mean, most of my friends were still single by then. Right. But I just wonder in between that 10 year gap, what that will look like with those. Right. Fa- like, and then it's like you invite your girlfriends and their husbands yeah, and possibly their kids and then it doesn't really become like a celebration of you. No. It becomes just like a a dinner that you're paying for everybody <laughs> for. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it's true. Mm. So it's, I totally get it. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, especially if you're like a woman who says like, okay, marriage is definitely not for me. Like, or it's not happening anytime soon. Like, that's something I couldn't do right now because I'm in a relationship. But if me and dude don't work out, and listen, I mean, little place cards. 
<laughs> you could be my maid of honor, Kathy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I get it. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm down for the cause. Mm-hmm. Would you do it? Would you? Mar- Has any guys ever done it? Uh, I've seen two instances where a, a guy has done it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah, but it's it's mostly um women Be- because what well it, not because of uh, Sex in the City, but it did make it popular. Right. Yeah. So they go full blown registry everything. Uh, like... No, I think they just have the ceremony. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's weird. That's a waste of time. Yeah, and I mean, she there wasn't anything to go through with on Sex in the City. She she just was being cheeky. It's not like she actually then threw a wedding. So no, right. no. Well, well, these these uh, women in particular, no, threw wedding the whole the whole shebang. Like walk down the aisle by themselves at church. Correct. Well, not mm-hmm. at a church, but at, at a facility. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. No. Yeah. 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 Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it me. To, it me. <laughs> but um, to go back to what you guys were uh, talking about, uh, there was the in, in that episode there was a conversation between uh, Carrie and Charlotte, and Carrie was like, "Think about it. If you are single after graduation, there isn't one occasion where people celebrate you." And then Charlotte goes, we have birthdays. And she goes, no, no, no. Everybody has a birthday. That's a wash. I'm talking about the single gal. And you guys brought up, you know, excellent points about, like, there really isn't mm-hmm. anything necessarily, like, to celebrate you as a just a individual. And, um, yeah, there, there I was uh, watching this uh, ABC special about this. And ABC Family? No, no, just an ABC special. Okay. <laughs> There's um, a difference. Yeah. And uh, one one woman, uh, Erica Anderson, says, uh, I think it's hard not to adopt whatever society's messages are. And I certainly think that one of the messages is that you are not enough if you're not with someone someone else, which is why she uh, went went along with it. And this one I found that was real interesting. And I want you guys to elaborate if you can. Um this woman uh petra she said i feel like a woman's chance to be wanted and worthy in our culture is measured in dog years i'm sorry we we are really mean we are really given this little window to find a male find a family have it all before we're 35 it's just unrealistic do you guys feel pressure about that that's an old school mentality i feel but Mm -hmm. I, i i get i get the i get the logic because it's like you know you're old enough to date. Where's your boyfriend? You have your boyfriend. When do you get engaged? You're engaged. When do you get married? You know, after mm-hmm. you're married, when's the first child? And I'm um, I think women are held to the standards of the titles that they kind of achieve in life, which would be mm-hmm. like wife and mother. But nowadays I think it's a little different, you know. Yeah. It's wife, mother, CEO, doctor, right. esquire, you know, and um but I you know, there's we we have a lot of people that we know that achieve those two titles and then they end up like flipping out. Right. Like they don't know what to do after that. If you like look through your high school, you know, yearbooks, you know, and see all the people who were like married or engaged or with children like shortly after college and did it the textbook way, you know, now they're those are the same people who are like, Oh my God, you're just living life. I love it. I wish I could And you're like, what? Like, you make marriage and children look miserable. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously. Like, you make it look like the worst thing ever. (laughs) You know, but like, I know friends who've gotten married like in the past couple years and they're just like, man, it's the same thing as like living with my boyfriend. It's fine. We're just married. And like, I believe the union of marriage is something special, but at at the same time, like when you become of this age. Yeah. It becomes more about, not more, but it's as equally special as it is about logistics and legality. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yes, we're married because we love each other and we want to be with each other. But we're also married because if I get sick, I want him to be able to vouch for me. I want him to be able to, you know... Pull the plug, whatever. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) What the? All right. Do you remember, um, what's his name? Uh, David Letterman? Yes. He got married, like, mad old. He got married because he was going to have heart surgery Mm -hmm. at, at, like, 60 or 70, whatever he was. Yeah. And his wife can't say anything if they were complications, if there were complications. Obviously, his parents are no longer alive. You know, so that's his. That was why he finally just said, "Okay, I'm gonna get married." Mm-hmm. You know, but look at like Russell Crowe and uh, not Russell Crowe. 
uh, Katie, what the hell, Goldie Hawn and oh, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Russell Crowe's doing in his life. <laughs> don't care either. Um, he, they are not married, but maybe they have like a help by proxy or something. You know, or like. Oh, like common law? Right. Yeah. Or you get like. Your taxes are different. You get to file taxes together. Just little things like that that somehow make a financial difference mm-hmm. is sometimes a reason why people proceed with the marriage, actual marriage part. Because love is what love is. It's your bond. You can't break that. Or maybe you can. I don't know. It gets broken all the time. But <laughs> Then it wasn't love. It wasn't what it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And a piece of paper and a legal document is going to change it. Mm-hmm. So, But people get married because they want to be married or people yeah. have weddings so they want to have weddings. But... If that's not in the cards for you or it's not what you want, why can't you just celebrate you and love you? Mm-hmm. Um, there was another... Uh, She's just like, mm-hmm. No, no, no. I was, <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> go ahead. Go, go, on, go on with your point. <laughs> uh, there was another article that said, you know, why, why are more women choosing to marry themselves? And oh, if I remember the statistic, it was... Because uh, this was taken from 2011, where it was um, that... Fifty one percent of people are getting married. Where in nineteen sixty two was seventy five percent. Nineteen sixty was seventy five percent. Yeah, so like, nineteen sixty two. You have to like avoid the draft or whatever. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that like a lot of people just you know don't want to sign up. And if um, you're in the mafia, you get married so your wife can't take the stand. Just saying. Okay. Um, and um, true story. Uh, this woman, uh, Sophie Tanner, she's like, everyone Everyone celebrates getting together with someone and becoming married, but there's no milestone in society that celebrates escaping something awful or returning to your own happiness and contentment. Yo, I feel that, but that's not actually true, Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's like, I need to get the name no, right. Um, so I could- <laughs> no, I, I, I know of many people who have, you know, kind of liberation parties after they get a divorce. Okay. So that's not necessarily accurate Sophie but mm-hmm. I get what she's saying mm-hmm. words to Tay Diggs <laughs> and um brown sugar reference wow thanks the woman the uh, Italian woman the 40 year old personal trainer Laura Messi she wet herself over the weekend in a lavish ceremony I thought he said wet herself me too I was like mm. oh. she uh she paid for the wedding herself it was 8,700 pounds and uh she had a cake with a figurine of her just on top of it. And she even went <laughs> to a honeymoon in Egypt by herself. And then she said... I would have just skipped the wedding and just went to Egypt. She said, well, it, the reason why they have the ceremony is to... Have the guests pay for her trip to Egypt? Well, no, 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 no. For to have accountability as, as opposed to... Because I wondered why go through all the trouble with having the ceremony. Just have a self-commitment thing to yourself. But they want people to be there to kind of like what if she meets the man of her dreams in egypt that's fine um she says i firmly believe that each of us must first love ourselves uh and you can have a fairy tale even without the prince so of course you know self-marriage is not legally binding and uh she first considered sologamy after a 12-year relationship ended when she was 38 telling friends that if she hadn't found a partner by the time she turned 40, she'd marry herself. Mm. If one day I find a man with whom I can plan a future, I'll be happy. But my happiness does not depend on him. Yeah, but you also don't need a party to figure that out. Well, this is what, this is what people are like, doing. I get the They're, reason why people do it, but at the same time, like I don't... This is like the same thing I was saying yesterday. Like These millennials want like a party because they got a part-time job. Like, <laughs> yeah, but these aren't millennials. I know. These are mm-hmm. grown ass women who should know that loving yourself is part of life and I don't know. I don't know. But but that but that's what I mean. I love myself. Throw me a party. No, they throw themselves a party. Oh. But but they invite people. You know, that's the thing. So I was like, mm-hmm. why do they need to do all that? I mean, whatever. You can do whatever you want. But I, I was just saying, like it's a it. it's a bit much. Uh that's what I'm saying, but I do agree that it's a bit much, and I do agree that it's a cool thing to do. I just hope it doesn't become, like, a thing. Also, I, like, I don't think honest, it's going to be an alternative. Honestly, Kathy, mm-hmm. if you were like, I'm throwing myself a wedding. <laughs> like, mm. I think I think it is going to be a thing. I mean, There's, oh. no, that's why I write books. Because right. then I'll throw myself book release parties. I don't, right. I don't need to marry myself. Oh, no, that's but, but, that's no, but, the thing. Like, no, but there's there's the alternative. You know, I mean, well, the celebratory yeah. thing. To celebrate yourself, book, book releases. Um, but, yeah, I think it is going to be a thing because there are... Uh, companies 
doing these things. There's there's um, imarriedme.com <laughs> where you can get a uh, a, a, a kit okay. and you can marry yourself. There's a ring in Is it. Is it a legal document? No. No. Oh, I married me dot com. Yes. Oh, wait, I have to look at this. She's like, let me bookmark you, you, this. You can get, <laughs> <laughs> Never. You can get, you can get a you can get a, a kit where it has a ring. Uh, I believe it has vows. Look at this. You are a reason. To, you are a reason to celebrate. Um, a roadmap to positivity. Our I married me kit has all you need to create your own ceremony, including a self wedding ring, vows, and daily affirmation cards. Let's see how much this costs. Hold on. I don't think it's that much. But. Should we shout them out? Con- contact us at love at imarriedme.com or 415-569-4383. You need Where's to 415? Yeah, we really do. I don't know. Oh, you send a ring sizer. It's only $3. Um, the seven. self-wedding okay. ring is $25. What? Mm-hmm. You get a t-shirt. Nothing but the best for my ring finger. <laughs> you get um, a, you can get a 14 karat gold, yellow gold one. That's um, Is it just a band? No diamond? Yeah, like a, like a wedding band. Two hundred thirty dollars. Uh, sterling silver t-shirt? fifty. No, for the, um, oh. the rings. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, there's a little t-shirt that has a heart, and then on the back it has me, me love, me love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen. I don't know what to really say if they, about if it. If they like it, I love it. <laughs> oh man, this last article uh, by brides.com it says it's always not. It's not always a replacement for a partner. While some self-marriages proponents are bound to keep flying solo, many who choose to self-marry by no means plan on being alone. It's not about replacing or preventing a potential partner. Mm-hmm. Sologamy is about saying, I am enough. For some people, a partner is a lovely bonus, but that doesn't mean that they're half of a whole. It means that they're, they were a whole to begin with. I think women marrying themselves might seem incredibly threatening because it looks like we're saying men are irrelevant. Anderson Anderson tells Vogue, but we're actually just saying that we matter. And also, it's not about narcissism. Finally, the biggest criticism of sologamy is that it's narcissistic, that it's a woman standing up and saying, I want a whole day about me. Nobody in the world is as amazing as I am, so I'll have to marry myself. This is incorrect on a lot of levels. First, lots of traditional brides want the whole day to be all about them, him, most Second, there's a huge amount of misogyny loaded into this criticism. Those practicing sologamy are largely women, and women who demonstrate that they are happy on their own are all too often vilified. While men, while men are perceived as happily independent as bachelors, women are seen as spinsters, desperate, or now narcissistic for remaining on their own. As a society, we are critical of women who are single. We are wary of women who claim to be happily independent, Sologamy is a way for women to break away from those stigmas. Wow. How do you guys feel about that? Um, I think that it is intriguing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't think that it's a narcissistic thing. I just, I get it to a degree, but at the same time, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't have a real opinion on it. Right. It's like, yeah, it sounds cool in a way. And I get the point where you have to like celebrate something because it's like everybody else is kind of got these things going on. And you want to celebrate yourself. But at the same time, like, I think you have to be like at a certain standard in life or a certain place in life to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, don't just like sit there and be like, oh, I haven't accomplished anything. And I don't feel like dating anyone. Nobody wants to date me, so I'm just going to marry myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird thing. But I do have something here. Okay. Besides the song of the day. Okay. So the song of the day, which I don't know if we're there or not, but we kind of are. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Bjork's song, Isobel. Okay. Um, it, the lyrics are, my name is Isobel, married to myself. And a woman from... The UK, a British woman, married herself after being single for six years and hearing that song. And she said she gets it. It's about making a pact or a promise to yourself and uh, somehow enacting that how you live your life from that day on. And she said that she didn't do it to, uh, you know, as a feminist statement. She said she did it to give herself clarity and feel empowered. She invited 50 of her friends and family to attend the wedding. 
She gave herself a ring and wore a vintage dress. She is opening to marrying somebody in the future. But this is the part I was like, uh. She said, the day was obviously centered on me, the final event being a mirror for me to kiss. But it also felt like I was sharing something very special with my friends, giving everyone an opportunity to reflect on their own ideas of love and commitment. What? You kissed a mirror, and then you're like, now you guys think about that. (laughs) (laughs) What? I'd be like, "Mm, that bitch crazy. (laughs) No, but... I guess it's supposed to reflect why why are you guys um, getting into it? Because some people might get into it for, oh, yeah, tax break. Woo! Like, that's not, you're not supposed to get married for that. You know? Some people do. Some people do it for selfish reasons as opposed to love. Mm. So this woman is saying, this woman is giving the ultimate saying, saying, like, yeah, I'm doing it for myself because I love myself. What about you guys? I don't know. Well, it's interesting. I'm glad we talked about it. Yeah. Um, I like to see some more men doing it. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see how much you guys care. But then the men, maybe the men who get married to themselves and the women who get married to themselves can get married, but first they have to get a divorce. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the men are do like, you, I just want to get married so I can have a bachelor party. But do you think that. Sorry, that was sexist, but true. Do you think that society would damn the men for doing it no you don't think so marrying themselves men having um an opportunity to be completely self-indulgent and selfish that's called a <laughs> thursday night <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's funny that the 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 criticism that's coming to women for oh you just want it to be all about you but when when men do that it's i mean it's the same premise when um you know men choose to stay single oh they're just bachelors mm. women staying single it's what's what's going on with her what's that Does she what's have this? cats yeah mm-hmm. so i think you know i'm sure the the criticisms will vary by gender okay but. you're over here dreaming about weddings during the day i mean you want you want the you know tux and all that good stuff too oh yeah I so do. i mean like if push comes to shove you got a website over there. No, I, I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I'll show up with a gift. <laughs> I, I think he wants to that. have the partner, not necessarily the party. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I know that, Martini. Calm down. Just saying. Just for fun sake. <laughs> so, I don't know. If anyone on this podcast realm is, you know, ever married themselves or thinking about it. You can write to us and tell us. I'll share your story. Where can they write to us, Jen? What? <laughs> at bedlovebeyond at gmail.com. Nice. <laughs> and you can also go to our website, www.bedlovebeyond.com, and look at all the articles that I was referring to. And our store. Yes, and our store. <laughs> our lovely store. Oh, where you can get what? Where you, what, what can you get there? I don't know. What can you get? Jesus, I want to <laughs> Sorry, I haven't. Yeah, Kathy's a- book. Oh yeah, Kathy's can- awesome book. Commissary Kitchen: My Infamous Prison Cookbook by me, Kathy Eandley, and the late Albert Prodigy Johnson. Rest in peace, P. Oh. In stores now: Amazon.com, Target, Barnes and Noble, and everywhere else books are sold. And you can also get the audio version on Audible.com. Precision. <laughs> that was crazy. She, she gets paid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> where where can uh, our lovely listeners uh, follow you at? Um, Instagram and Twitter at Kath3000 and um, www.kathyeandley.com. That's I A N D O L I. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects you want to tell anybody or know anything? None that the NDAs will allow me to. Okay. But. Not a problem. We can talk about it soon. Maybe on another podcast about sologamy. <laughs> after I've married myself. No. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You can uh, give us a call or text us at 201-862-8BED. That is 201-862-8233. You can hit us up on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash bedlovebeyond. And you can also follow us at bedlovebeyond on Instagram twitter and youtube that is the end of the show i am martini 
Still Jen. And thank you, Kathy, for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys. Peace.